Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope that it is going extremely well with you guys. So for today's video it is just going to be a very short video. Again I'm going to apologize for my rocking chair but it is what it is. So if I rock I apologize. I'm going to try not to. But today's video is just going to be a short video about just the basics and the logistics about what happens if you fail a module in vet school. For anyone who doesn't know, I am repeating fourth year at the moment. Last year, when I was fourth year for the first time, I failed a module EQM, which is equine medicine and surgery. This year I am repeating it. So I'm just going to tell you guys the really just the logistics behind what happens if you fail a year, a module, whatever, and you have to repeat. I am not going to get into my personal experiences or how it was for me and all that. If I ever do get into that, it'll be a whole video on its own, but I don't have the strength for it today. Today is a chilled, cozy Friday. I am not going to class. I am just relaxing at home. It's one of the perks of repeating. So I'm literally in my pajama pants and um, yeah, just for the irony of it, I have my class of 2024 hoodie um, just because I am not class of 2024 anymore and I was very upset with the existence of this hoodie after I failed um, so I have made my piece and I am now very gladly wearing it again um, <laughs> so before I failed failing in vet school was a bit of a taboo subject vet school is a very prestigious place and majority of the students as in I think they have a 95% pass rate so majority of the students never even deal with failing until you have failed and you realize how many students actually have gone through it so it was sort of whispered about in the hallways and there was a lot of mixed information about what happens if you fail you know how it works what you have to repeat etc so today I just want to clear all of that up for a little bit and just sort all of that out because I struggled so much to get the information. Here I just want to explain everything that happens, how it works and just everything you need to know. I will say that I really hope that none of you ever have to deal with this. It's not bad to fail. Honestly, I am enjoying it quite a lot. I am basically on holiday at the moment. I've gotten so much time to just reset and chill. I'm also getting married soon. <laughs> so <laughs> I actually have time to go on honeymoon and to do all that. Of course, also in OP fashion, the week as in three days after my wedding, I have an EQM semester test which I can't even get out of because that's the module that I failed. So, OP in all its glory, guys, but it's fine. That is not today's issue. Today we have other things to discuss. So, first off, just to get the normal things out of the way, for University of Pretoria and specifically for vet school, 50% is a pass. So, if you have 50%, you've passed, you're fine. No one cares if you have more than 50, like, if you pass, you pass, if you fail, you fail. There is really no in-between, for me at least, and for most other people. There are some people that are very big on how much did you get. I can't deal with that. I am. It's a pass or a fail, and that is all that I care about. Um, I will learn to be an amazing vet in the years that I have to practice it. Book learning is not going to make you an amazing vet, so I'm not going to stress myself out over it. But... Back to what we're supposed to be talking about, 50% is a pass. How your final year mark is calculated is by 50% of your exam mark and 50% of your year mark pre-exam. So if you, you have your year mark with all your tests and assignments and all that, and then you have your exam mark, and then your final year mark is 50-50 weighting for each of those. The two ways in which you could actually fail is for one, if you don't even get exam entrance, that is, it has different values for different modules, but in general, it's around 40 to 45, like somewhere around there, um, percent that you have to have for your initial year mark to be able to write the exam. So if you don't have that mark for that module and you can't even write the exam, then you immediately fail. 
Otherwise, what usually happens and how it also worked with me was that I had a good enough year mark, got a year mark above 50, if I remember correctly, and I went in, I wrote the exam, and my exam went hard. Some people really just barely fail. I failed gloriously. I mean, I think that is the worst fail that OP has seen. I don't know, I, they've probably had worse, but it was really bad. So I failed very badly. There was a lot that went on around that, but point being, I failed. For some modules, there is also, I don't know, I don't actually know if there is a specific amount that you have to get for your exam to be admitted for a supplementary, but I had a really bad mark and I still got in for the supplementary exam. Supplementary exam is basically a redo of the exam if you failed the first one. So if you fail, you will get your results. There is on the UP portal for University of Pretoria students, they will know you have the UP portal, your results get shown there, and then there are different codes. So usually it'll just say pass if you have passed, and then if you have not passed, it will usually give a code. I think, I stand under correction, but I think it's triple nine if you have a supplementary. It's a very feared code, like everyone just wants to see pass, but it, and then that will stand in the place of your mark. So instead of seeing your mark, you'll just see triple nine and it'll be like, oh crap. So um, that is what happened with me. I was really surprised, honestly, that I got the supplementary, but I didn't think I did as badly as I did. <laughs> so got the supplementary, um, went to campus, wrote the supplementary exam, and then I failed that one as well. So it would also be, for example, if you have a year mark of 45, so you have exam entrance, but your year mark is below 50, and you have 50 for the exam, then you would still not pass because then your final year mark would not be above 50 because the 45 would drag it down. So then you would have to have 55 at least for the exam. So point being, your final year mark has to be 50%. And I think there is also a mark for the exam that you have to have above. So for example, even if your year mark is like 70 something, but you had 30 something for your exam mark then that could still fail you because then you still clearly do not know enough same as if you have a low enough year mark that you don't get entrance to the exam you can have a low enough exam mark that you still fail even though your final mark was technically above 50. and then basically you wait there is nothing that happens immediately um the results will come with time i knew that i failed though like i immediately knew it was really bad but anyway the results come also on the UP portal and it will say fail or pass. My fail was actually a very funny story. We were sitting in a restaurant and um, I obviously cried. Uh, and then uh, yeah, the people at the restaurant thought that we broke up because I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go sit in the car and, you know, just sort of deal with this. And um, yeah, they really thought that I just like stormed out the restaurant. I didn't even storm. I walked calmly. But they, yeah, it was really funny. They thought that we had broken up. They almost brought my fiance like a bunch of consolation food and stuff, which would have been great, honestly. Like I could have used some good restaurant food at that point. <laughs> but yeah, so you get your results on the UP portal and then you basically just wait until registration comes along again. And then this is where it is sort of split. So if you are first year to third year, this is how it works. You have failed. Let's go for second year. You have failed anatomy, as a lot of people do. <laughs> as I very nearly did. Um, so you failed anatomy. So then when most people would register then for third year and all the modules, you would again register for second year and you would just register for anatomy. If you fail anatomy and physiology, if you fail more than one module, you register for the other, for all the modules that you failed for, basically. And then you just repeat the whole year, which is a thing where it's different in vet school than it is from other faculties. So for, I feel like for most faculties, if you fail a module, then you can just take that single module the next year, add it to all your things that you have there, and you just sort of like carry it on with you. But in vet school, there are a few reasons why it doesn't work like that. If you fail, you basically redo the whole year with just that one module or two modules or three or whatever, how many you failed. So the difference comes in with, in vet school, literally every single one of the modules follows on each other. So every single year, every single module assumes knowledge from every single module that you had the previous year. So you can't just not have a module 
just a failed module because you need all that knowledge for every single new module that you have. Also, we don't get to make our own timetables and figure out what classes work for us and when we want to have them and all that. We get given set timetables. We have class from one in the more uh, from, we have class from eight in the morning until one in the afternoon every single day. That is a time that the lecturers are available as well because a lot of them are also actively practicing as veterinarians in the hospital on campus. So they're not available at all times. All the modules follow on each other and we really have very set times that we get to have those classes. Which was also really weird for me because for me I was with the same group of people, the same class from first year, second year, third year, fourth year. And then suddenly I had to be with a whole new class which luckily I did know a few people there. Also a lot of students failed with me. So I was not alone by any means, but it was still very strange to suddenly be with a whole new group of people. So it is one of the weird things about vet school, but that is how it works. How it works for fourth, fifth and sixth years is a bit different and a bit more intense, but I do also understand why. So as with first to third year, you just fail what you just repeat whatever you failed. For fourth to final year, you have to repeat everything that you failed as well as any modules that you had a final year mark of less than 65% for. So for example, for me, for all my modules, somehow, for the first time ever, I did pretty well. I got 65 for above all of them except for three. So I had 40 something, less than that, I don't know, I had a bad mark for EQM, uh, which is equine medicine and surgery. And then I had small animal medicine and surgery first semester and for small animal medicine and surgery second semester. So those were the three modules that I had to repeat, but I really just repeated two at a time. So it's been really chilled. <laughs> so however many you have below 65 for, you have to repeat all of them. There is a bit of a difference though, that the one that you fail in, you just repeat it as if you're doing it for the first time. So you do all the tests, all the exams, all the assignments, all the quizzes, everything. For the modules that you are repeating but didn't fail, you basically do everything the same during the year or the semester. You do all the semester tests, all the quizzes, all the assignments. But if your initial year mark is above 50, then you don't have to write the exam, which is fantastic. Come on now. I know, Papa. I know I to say hi. She's the best girl. Oh, yes, I'm the best girl. Oh, yeah, that's also why my hoodie looks the way that it looks. It is filled with dog and cat and human hairs. Say hi. Oh, this is so boring. She's talking to you guys instead of playing with me. Oh, it's so rude. Yeah, she really makes all of this very easy. <laughs> Sorry. I don't even know where I was at this point. Completely lost my train of thought. But from fourth year onward, so have you. Oh, yes, there was, that's where I was. So... <laughs> If you had, for example, for me, for my first semester now that I was repeating, for EQM did all the normal things because it's a whole year module. And then for SAS, which is small animal medicine and surgery that I was repeating but had passed, I wrote the three semester tests and yeah, there was no other assessments for it. So it was those three. And then my year mark was, I think, 65 or something. So then I just filled in a form, an exam exemption form, uh, that I got from, I think it was a student center or somewhere, and I just emailed it in to whoever is responsible for it at that time, and never heard back. You will never hear back from these things, but if you have a, an, an initial year mark above 50, then you can assume that you're exempted as long as you hand it in your form. So fill in your form, send it in, and you just assume that you're exempted, and that is it. Didn't have to write an exam, didn't have to go through that again, I just did the semester stuff. There are some modules that also have additional exemptions that they're willing to offer, so exemptions from practicals, exemptions from some assignments, exemptions from some quizzes. In general, you have to write all the semester tests and then module specific what else you have to attend. And yeah, that's about it. So I am currently doing small animal medicine and surgery second semester, already passed my first test, planning to have my above 50% for my initial year mark or my initial semester mark then, and then won't have to write the exam, but for EQM, I have to do everything like I've never done it before. So I'm doing all the quizzes, 
all the semester tests and I have to write the exam and the practical exam at the end of the year. So that is basically how all of it works. There is not much else to it. 50% is a pass. If you are first year to third year, then you only repeat whatever module you fail. You repeat that whole year for just that module or modules. And then from fourth year to sixth year, you repeat whatever modules you failed with any modules that you had less than 65% for. If you had failed the module, you do everything from start to finish. If you're repeating it, but you didn't fail the module, you do everything up until the exam, as long as you have a year mark of above 50%. If you have below 50%, you still have to write the exam. Hello guys, very quickly, I actually completely ended that video and forgot to include this part, so Kitty's here with me. This is Oliver, for anyone who hasn't officially met him, he sort of came around when the channel was um, slowing down a bit. So I don't think he's been in a video officially. He's very sleepy, I just grabbed him. Um, but I forgot to add a very important part of this video, and that is sort of one of the more negative parts about failing. Hi! So, how it works in vet school is that you do not have unlimited lives. You do not get to just keep failing as long as it takes for you to pass. That is unfortunately not how it works. So, for vet school, you can either fail the same year twice, then you're out. If you fail it once and you pass, then you're still in. If you fail it the second time, then you're out of vet school. If you passed that year, you fail the year, then you pass it, and then you fail the next year, then you can still stay in for one more try. So you can either fail the same year one, twice before you're out, either fail the same year twice before you're out, or fail different years three times before you're out. So either you fail a year, fail again, and you're out, or you fail a year, pass, fail a year, pass, and then whenever you fail again, you are out. Wow. He's so cute. And that's it, guys. That is all about what happens if you failed a module in vet school in South Africa. It is obviously different, different for other universities and other countries. But this is the only veterinary faculty in South Africa, so if you are a vet student in South Africa, that is how it will work. I hope that this can help some people. I really hope that very few people ever have to use this. It's not fun to repeat, but I hope that if you do need this, that this can help you a little bit. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again for the next one, probably, but I'm married! <laughs>